netcasts originating from the birthplace of the oil industry. We are the stream. I'm not a professional photographer. I owned a camera shop and uh, we were, my wife and I were there for 19 years. And I took a lot of pictures for my own enjoyment. Now when I take a photo of pictures, I take 20 pictures and I save them all. I sold out to Armstrong, the photographer, and he takes a roll of pictures and he saves one print, not me. When I take 20 pictures, they're all mine and I save them all, good or bad. So. Don't be too critical of the slides. About 1952, my wife said to me, if you don't take some pictures of a steam locomotive, our children aren't going to remember what they look like. At that time, we had two trains, two railroads served Titusville, the New York Central and the Pennsylvania. So uh, later you'll see a picture of a steam locomotive. I have a few pictures that were taken from an 1895 city directory. I saw the old picture and then I would try to match it with one currently in town. So with that, uh, let's uh, start them and I'll try to identify each one. Do you remember when you entered the hospital really on the uh, south end of it? and you went up a driveway in the middle of the road, street. This is halfway between First and Monroe. Uh, for a while, I thought that was the main entrance right there. In fact, you'd better be pretty well in order to climb all those steps just to get into the hospital. This was the hospital in those days. This is back about 1954 or 5. They had a campaign and remodeled the hospital here a number of years ago, and I think they paid 99 bids. The requirements for a 100-bid hospital are different than one for under 100. Now, this is on the uh, south side of the hospital, uh, where the parking lot is now right in front, where you saw the, uh, the porch and the long steps. This is on the west side of the hospital, a new maternity entrance. The maternity ward is right on the west part of the hospital. There it is again. Across the street from the hospital on First Street, Bob Anderson had a home. He and his wife lived there on the corner for a long time, and then one day they removed that and they made a parking lot out of it 
for the doctors at the hospital. Harry Baumgartner had an auto parts store down on East Spring Street, right at the lower end of Drake Street. They tore that down, and then there's a parking lot or a uh, uh, an alleyway went down through there to uh, Water Street. Harry later moved up onto West Spring Street. Up on the heights, they used to have a water tower, and that water tower would fill it, they'd fill it up with water. But every now and then, the valve would stick on it, and I lived up there, and it would drop an icicle clear to the ground practically. And they came along and removed that, and now you see the water tower is gone. They put another big water tower over on Petroleum Street. The Regal Boys had a Quaker State Station. This was on the corner of Central Avenue and Franklin Street, right south of the uh, Colonel Drake Hotel. It became a parking lot. Any of you people from out of town can't find a place to park, that's too bad. We have done our share of making parking lots for you. The Orpheum Theater. This is an old picture out of that uh, directory, and this was on East West Central Avenue, the 100 block of West Central Avenue. This is a, when I saw it in that old book, and then I went down and I made a, a slide of the Orpheum Theater on uh, Central Avenue. It later became Sears and Roebuck store. They tore it down and put in Sears and Roebuck. Then Sears and Roebuck disappeared. And we had a, uh, a doctor come in, eye, ear, nose, and throat that was there for quite a while. And now it has changed over to uh, Adam Middleton. This is uh, Besselman's Tin Shop. You can see the Keystone sign on the right-hand corner there. It was right across from the filling station on Central and Drake. They tore that down, and Boron, our ex Boron put a uh, filling station on that corner. It was a Boron station for a while, and then it became the uh, office for uh, two or three different lawyers and uh, a uh, real estate agent sold out of there. Up on the corner of uh, Church Run Street and uh, Union Street, the McKinney's had a large mansion, and that picture was in that old directory. And uh, so I went up and took a picture of it, and uh, you can see the uh, slag stone walk and everything and the uh, fence that was there back in 1800s. Ross Casella came in and built a home on that lot and uh, I believe it's still for sale. <laughs> Ross and his wife are both gone. This was Chase Brook. This was a tavern down in the corner of Drake and Central Avenue. It was moved in from Centerville. It was up on Centerville there, and they moved it down into Titusville. They t finally tore that down. It had been a furniture store also, and then it became an Atlantic filling station was Atlantic for a short time, and then they changed it over to Quickville. And uh, at the present day, they put a canopy and everything on it, but it's still a Quickville station at the corner of Martin and East Central Avenue. This is the Quickville station at the same location we at one time had three theaters. We had Penn Theater, we had the Orpheum Theater, and then we had movies at the Parish House, which was connected with the Episcopal Church. But, uh, and now we don't have any. The Penn Theater was a large building. This is, was the southern extension of it, cleared down toward the railroad tracks. 
You can see all the brick that were in that. It was a long brick building. And of course, as progress moves along, you know, we tear things down and it became the driveway for the Burger King. <laughs> you go down right beside the driveway into the Burger King. <laughs> the Presbyterians had a manse up on uh, Franklin Street. It was right below the library. And there was an alley right there, that's right there in front of a picture, which was Church Street. That's Church Street right there on the right, and this was the uh, manse, and I think there was something like 15 or 17 rooms in that home, and uh, they tore that down and gave it to the YWCA, and uh, they built it into a lawn, and then they decided to improve it, and they put a parking lot in there right there for the YWCA. Curry's Dry Cleaning Shop was located on East Central Avenue, right close to Lee Coates' garage, and also there was a gift shop in there. Mrs. Curry's sister had a gift shop there. Lee Coates' garage is right next door, sold Chevrolets and Oldsmobiles. They were, uh, this is on East Central Avenue, but the gift shop and the dry cleaning shop was right next door. They did all their dry cleaning out at Oil Creek Refinery uh, site. But one day, Herb came in there with a great big ball and a couple of trucks, and the house disappeared. And it became a parking lot there behind the hotel. This is the Colonel Drake Hotel previously called the Mansion House. It was a large, permanent fixture there in town and uh, apparently got in sad repair and they finally decided it had to go. But it ended up as a parking lot for the CVS drugstore. The drugstore was built right behind it it took out uh, also Dr. Anderson's office and some other buildings there, but that was where it was. It was all located right there close to CVS. This is the Titusville Police Station. This is located on Cherry Street. That's Cherry Street right there in the center of the picture. And uh, Franklin Street is right in front here. Coburn's Bakery is on the right. They tore that down and made a parking lot for City Hall. Uh, some of the city workers park over there, and that's the old Coburn Bakery building is still there. Up on the corner of Spruce and Franklin, they tore this house down on the corner, and... Uh, and then they tore down one or two more to there, to right close to it. That one also was on Spruce Street. And then they built in the Titusville Fire Department and the Titusville Police Department. They sit right there on that corner now where those buildings used to sit, on the corner of Spruce and Franklin. This is 211 North Martin Street. This was the Associated Charities building. For years it was the Associated Charities and they had that thing piled full of clothes and everything under the sun. But the uh, Presbyterian Church bought it and they turned it into a small lawn there and so on. And in the summertime, a lot of the young people uh, play out in there on that grass. This is a picture taken back in... Uh, the 75th Jubilee of Oil. This is on Diamond Street. That's the arcade restaurant right there in the center. And uh, it showed a uh, team of horses there and the old fire engine 
usually one of the hostess from Pleasantville, and it's still the arcade restaurant, and they now own the whole building. This is the Flatiron Building, I call it. And this was the picture that was in the old directory. There was a clock up on the top of it. There was a fountain right out in front that a horse could even get a drink of water out of. But this is the way it was in, about in the 50s. And uh, it was a uh, sort of a landmark building also, unique. Right in the corner, a diamond of uh, diamond and spring. This is a section of it that was on Diamond Street. It was long, a long building in there. And right just east of uh, the uh, building there, uh, Molly Metzger had a, a dress shop. And... Uh, and then there was a drug, there was a uh, jewelry store in along there, and then Wininsky's. And all that was a real, really thing that I was surprised at. I had never seen a grocery store like that. I was born and raised in the country. This had groceries piled clear to the ceiling and a long ladder that you could go back and forward and pick up what you wanted. Next door was the Western Auto Store run by Milt Colvin. Before that, it had belonged to Bew, and it was a gun shop. Next door was the East Titusville Mills. They had a uh, milling, big mill out on East Titusville on the Dead Man's Curve, just, just out of town. But uh, they had a store in town. And right next door was Joe Aversa's Barber Shop. Joe got moved out of there, and he moved over on to West Central Avenue, too. But in that old directory, there was a building of the Furtick building. And I thought, well, that's got to be in town somewhere. And I looked around, and that ended up as the Brown Rooster on the corner of Drake, uh, Martin, and Diamond Street. I thought for a while there were apartments upstairs, but there weren't. Those were all just big open halls up there, rooms. Uh, you notice the windows were all so close together. Hardly room for petitions. As far as that, this was the side onto Martin Street. It was a long building. Down on South Franklin Street, right next to the bridge over the Oil Creek, Lyle Peoples had a filling station or a uh, garage, and he sold mercuries. He was there quite a while, and then he got next door was. Uh, Lizzie Wilbert had a quality cache, and about this time we had five quality caches in town, three or four just small ones, and then one great big one. That was Plum Place on the right there, down that went down under the railroad tracks back onto Martin Street, and this was run by Doc Berlin, the Goodwill store next door, Good Goodyear. Next door was a Seward House. It was a tavern, and you could rent rooms in there too. It was a uh, uh, local watering hole, and so on. This used to be the Goldberg Auto Parts Store. It was a little building right between the railroad tracks and Seward. And uh, Bernie Reynolds from uh, Townville later had a plumbing shop. Next to the railroad tracks was this large building owned by the Phillipses. And uh, they rented it out. It was a rooming house. And the street to the left was Mechanic Street. But they tore that all down, and then they put in McDonald's. That was from Lyle Peoples' garage, clear down through where Bernie had the, uh, the plumbing shop, and then the doctor's offices down on Mechanic Street. Across from Mechanic Street, was the Brady House. The Brady House was also a rooming house. They had the tavern in the lower section, and you could rent rooms, and people stayed upstairs in that. They had their own parking lot. But right next door, Walt Howe had a tire recapping shop, store and sold general tires. He had a, a silent partner by the name of Dr. Edwards. He was a dentist in town. The Confers had a restaurant. And it was right next door to the house tire shop and so on.
Next door was Allen's Hardware. This was uh, had been there quite a while, and it became uh, Barker's Hardware. Barker, uh, there was three or four of those boys and their father. And next door was Ellis Day. Now that was on the east side of Franklin Street. Uh, Ellis Day is now is on the west side of Franklin Street. When you see a rose, that's the end of that reel. <laughs> this is the old Palace Laundry, and this is a picture that was in that 1895 directory. If you'll notice, it's real narrow. It was twice that big when it burnt. It burnt in 1972. I lived right across the street, but I happened to be in Alaska, so it wasn't me that started the fire. <laughs> But it was a uh, large building and had uh, the palace laundry. There were four apartments upstairs, two on each side of a hall that went the full length of the building. The Helfridges owned it. The Bill Helfridge and, uh, and uh, Louis, and uh, they gave Louis the business, and the other Helfridges used to rent out the apartments upstairs that this extended down Perry Street quite a ways. Uh, and they tore that all down, and they made that a parking lot for the China restaurant just two doors east of where the parking lot is on the corner of Perry and S S Spring Street. Transpen Wax Works was out at East Titusville, and they process patrol... Uh, paraffin that is a byproduct of the oil industry. The uh, crude oil in Pennsylvania has a base of paraffin, and this was their office at that time, just a mobile home that they had parked in on the uh, lot there at East Titusville, what used to be the city service refinery. They had a fire out there, and paraffin wax is very hard to put out. It caught a big tank on fire and uh, they used a lot of foam and everything. My father lived 10 miles out of town and he could see the black smoke from that fire. And uh, fire pictures like this are easy to take because all you do is just snap the picture and you've got lots of picture. They get at and build a new building on the end of their uh, warehouse there and so on. They make candle wax and wax for all kinds of packages. Everything has a slight coat of wax, like cereal, soap bars. Then they get out and build a new office building. Uh, it's been owned by several outfits, and uh, Honeywell owned it for a while, and now I think it's owned by a French outfit. This is a picture of Bill Scheide. He was a philanthropist and thinks a lot of Titusville. He lived here in Titusville, and uh, he's always had a kind spot in his heart for the Titusville area schools. He bought this building, which was a Benton building, up on the corner of Walnut and Washington. And this is the way it used to look. And then when I was on the board, we get at and refurbished it and uh, made it look like this. Bill Scheide had a library in there, and he has a complete Gutenberg Bible. It was printed in sections, and a lot of places you don't find all the sections. E.T. E. Hall. This was a large furniture store on the corner of Martin and East Central Avenue. Unique in one way that, that the porch on the front of the building extended clear out over the sidewalk. So if it rained real hard and you got caught downtown, run under the porch and uh, stay out of the rain. And uh, it was a large wooden building, and when it went up, it went pretty quick. They tore it down, and the first thing they built in was a Loblaw store. Loblaws weren't there too long. That was on Central Avenue in the corner of Martin. They changed the name on it, and they made it Riverside practically owned by the same outfit, different name, and so on. But later, they tore down Riverside, and now you'll see it as a large parking lot right there for a Rite Aid, Rite Aid drugstore, built a new <laughs> building on that corner.
There's lots of parking spaces, that's for sure. Weber's had a meat market. Weber's had a meat market up on Martin Street in that old directory, and uh, it was right in the corner of Cherry Alley, Cherry Street, and it ended up being torn down into the parking lot for Walt Howe's tire shop. Walt moved his tire shop up to the old Jones Brothers Buick garage, and. Uh, that ended up as a parking lot there. The West End Methodist Church a congregation had a church on East Spruce Street, just off of Franklin. And uh, they got out and built a brand new church out right next to Franklin Street and uh, had it located on the corner of Spruce and Franklin. And then one day in comes Herb Hasbrook with his big ball and a couple of trucks and the church disappeared. The old church just disappeared. And it ended up in a parking lot for the new church right on the corner. Thompson's Drug Store at one time was on Diamond Street. This is uh, right up close there where the uh, Arcade Restaurant was. There's a sign up on the side of that building that says, San Cure Salve. That was a product of Thompson's Drug Store. The Thompsons moved over onto Franken Street, South Franken Street, just below Central Avenue. And this was the copy at that time, and you could park on that street at that time. And then in came Charlie Miller, and he got at and uh, put a new front on the building, made it Thompson's Drugstore. And it was that way for quite a while until it changed hands and Bob Smith bought it, and they moved it back <laughs> and took the front off of the building and put it back to Thompson's Drug Store. And now it's a different store. I'll have to get a new slide for that one. Mather Studio was upstairs in that building. Mather was a photographer who took a lot of pictures around the oil fields and so on. But his studio was in that building. Okie McFate and his wife owned a uh, dress shop right across from the post office. This is on Washington and Spring Street. This was right in the corner of the street. It was the Algronix building. Right next to McFate's was the Washington Lunch. You could get seven hot dogs in there for a dollar back at that time. And right next door, of course, uh, there was a barber shop. It became the G&H shop. Gene and Tom Beeson bought the G&H shop and operated it for quite a while, right across from the post office. And then one day they sold it out, and later it became uh, Amanda Ray's children's shop for children's clothes and so on. But that uh, soon disappeared, and it became Allstate Insurance Agency. Just east of the Algronix building, I think it's. Nope, this is the Titusville Ironworks. This is the home office of the Titusville Ironworks, located on South Franklin Street, right, right opposite where Ellis Days used to be. It was a three-story building, and they came in there with a big ball, and they tore that all down. Uh, the uh, Ironworks had ceased to exist, and uh, they uh, tore that down and made a vacant lot of it. It was a long building, as far as that goes. There's Caron's restaurant on the right-hand side. It's still there, but not being occupied at the present time. And then Ellis Day built his new furniture store on that spot where the oil, or the uh, ironworks was. This is a picture of the East Titusville Mills out on the curve going toward Pleasantville. 
It was large wooden structure. They're the ones that had the uh, store, retail store downtown, and they had a lot of buildings out there, and they were all wood. Mother always got her flour from uh, East Titusville Mills. Uh, she liked the uh, seal of Minnesota. And they used to have to buy it, of course, 25-pound sacks. They'd get a railroad carload at a time. But they finally went out of business of handling it because they didn't sell that much flour. But it always amazed me that someone didn't burn that thing down. You know, it was a likely prospect. All those wooden buildings that make a spectacular fire. But it didn't. And Burns bought it. And he put in, Mr. Burns put in the tire shop coming up next. There you are. He also has U-Haul cars and tra trailers that, uh, that he leases. Burns' Tire Shop on the old East Titusville Mills. This is the caretaker's house at Drakewell Park. It used to sit over where the parking lot is now. And uh, they picked that house up and they moved it over to the entrance, right where you drive in Drakewell Park. Uh, quite a feat for a brick building to lift it up and carry it over there and uh, set it next to the road. St. Joe's School, high school. This was a Catholic school located on Main Street. It was between first and second, and it was a large building. It uh, finally got so there were such a few students that they finally had to close it. But St. Joe's was operated for quite a number of years by a, a society of sisters, and they tore it down and made a large, well, mostly just a lawn there uh, beside the CAC, the other Catholic uh, youth center. Up on the corner of uh, East Central Avenue and Spring Street combined on the West End, West Central Avenue and Spring Street, they tore this house down. And that is the uh, home that was for the uh, caretaker that was in charge of the in-town motel. This one's uh, on the, where Spring Street and S Central Avenue run together on West End. And of course, they tore those all houses all down and then they built in the new That's that's a picture really of the uh, in-town motel. That's that's where most of the rooms were out there and the other building was where the caretaker lived and took care of renting them and so on. But they tore that down and they made then the comfort in it's located on that particular spot right now. And it's not uncommon right now for that thing to be full. If there's something going on in town, quite often they'll fill the uh, comfort in. That's the entrance to the comfort in there. Molly's Mill Restaurant. This uh, was on the lower end of Monroe Street. This building at one time was Kelly's Feed Store. a ground feed and sold feed to all the farmers in this area. And they came along and refurbished it and made it into a restaurant. And uh, also when they did that, they uh, located a few cabooses on the property. But this was a large building and it had uh, uh, dining rooms and uh, they could have uh, large uh, banquets and so on on board on, in that. Now this is the rear of that uh, <clears throat> restaurant. That's where the, uh, they had the banquets and so on. <clears throat> on the uh, grounds at the restaurant they had a a group of cabooses, and they're all painted the color that the railroad ordinary used on them. They had about 20 of them up there on sidings, 
and they'd rent those out by the night, and uh, people would stay in them and stay overnight and then eat in a restaurant and so on. There's a New York Central. Now you see they're all gone. They moved all the cabooses from there down to the Perry Street Station where they had a siding and they located, I think, 21 of the different cabooses right next to the Perry Street Station. But those cabooses up there were all moved down and uh, plumbed in. And uh, I think they're winterized so they can use them. And so on in the wintertime, too. Down on South Kerr Street, uh, Everett Hasbrook had a salvage yard. And uh, he used to buy a lot of junk and so on. And uh, they tore that all down and made a big parking lot out of it for the middle school. That's the middle school you see back there in the foreground. This is on Kerr Street, South Kerr. This is uh, the picture of the steam locomotive that I told you about. My wife said, you better take a picture of, of those. Well, when the locomotive went through town, headed north or coming south, it always stopped at the water tower and took on a bunch of water. And so you'd see that train come up there, stop, pick up water, and then proceed north or, when it was coming south, go on south. There's a tower all alone, and uh, usually you could see the uh, Kerr Milling Company also on up the street. There the tower is gone, but you can still see the Kerr Milling building up along Route 8. I think practically all the tracks are gone up through there now. There are uh, no tracks there at all. They're all lifted. This is City Hall. This was <clears throat> right across from the Colonel Drake Hotel on uh, Franklin, just north of Central Avenue. Next door used to be the fire station. You can see in the background there a tower with a bell in it. So every time they had a fire, they would ring that bell as to where the fire was. If it was number 15, it was the corner of Spruce and, and Goose or something like that. You could all run down and see the fire. But the city, it was right next to the city hall at that time. This was before they moved it up on the North Franklin Street. There you can see the building for the fire trucks and some of the fire trucks sitting outside on uh, what now is the parking lot for, this, for the uh, city hall. After the war, the CD, uh, Civil Defense, gave Titusville a fire truck, and this is the one that they used there. There you see the fire building is gone completely, and you have a parking lot right straight through to Washington Street, from Franklin clear to Washington Street. This is a monument attributed to Heisman, John Heisman. John Heisman played football here in Titusville years and years ago. This is uh, down on Franklin Street. This is where Lambert's had a plumbing shop in the corner there, and it was a tavern on this end of the building, right where it says Mail Pouch Tobacco. The railroad track runs right through there, and it runs through there today. That's the one that goes out to East Titusville. Next door was Martin's Market. Martin Berglin had a meat market there, and uh, he was real popular. Next door was Rossner's Cafe and Rossner's Hotel. Next to that was Jim was uh, Matt Kelly's newsstand. Everybody went into Matt Kelly's and got newsstand and got papers and so on. And right 
beyond the uh, newsstand was the Palace Cafe. That's another tavern there. And uh, right next door, there was a little alley went through there. Do you remember the alley's name? That was Arch Street. It went down there, and Jack Bennett had a building down there that he bought first. This is the Titusville Herald building, where they had a printed the Herald. It belonged to the Davises. Dean Phipps had an auto store in there. And uh, they uh, were there quite a while. And uh, then next door, McFates had had their dress shop down there before they got moved out of there and moved up onto Spring Street across from the post office. But that building belonged to the Davis Brothers, I think it was. And uh, next door, the Singer's Sewing had a uh, building owned by Dr. Bernstein's father. Uh, his father used to live up there above the building. And uh, uh, next door was uh, Maisel's Beauty Shop and Jake Swetsky's Ice Cream and Cigar Shop. Uh, this was all called the Better Days Program. They tore that whole section down, right down through, down Franklin Street there, of those buildings. And when you came around the corner of the building and headed east again, the first store you'd run into was Al Yashinsky's Barbershop. Then there was a pizza hut, or pizza villa, and a pizza brosa. There were two pizza shops right there next to each other, and this was the Elks building. And the National Fuel Gas had an office right in the corner of that building. And it was uh, quite a tall building, and the uh, fuel office was right there. This is a picture of the bargain store owned by Overman Brothers. This is on the corner of Moore Place and uh, East Spring Street. And uh, they had a large uh, clothing goods store there, and they used to cash a lot of checks. People who came in from the Cyclops, the ironworks, the, uh, the uh, forge works, and so on, and get their check cash on Friday night. Next door was the Normandy Inn. It had a tavern, and then it had rooms upstairs. I showed the pictures that one place, and the lady uh, had been a telephone operator. They had a telephone exchange on the second floor. This is the farmer's market, uh, just east of the Normandy uh, Inn, and uh, it was ironic. They built a farmer's market in the mall. This is the P&A. This is the newest building on that development. It was uh, in good shape, not very old, when they uh, redeveloped it and tore it down, and uh, the P&A then moved up onto East Central Avenue. Next door was Reznikov's furniture store. Isidore Reznikov ended up as the managing in it. And they had a lot of buildings, and it was uh, a, lot of, a lot of room there on that corner. And down, Spring, down Martin Street, clear down there to where the Titusville Supply was. Now, when Isidore inherited it, he couldn't sell it. It was left in a trust to him, and he couldn't sell the place. And then they, the city came along by eminent domain, a nonprofit organization, and they gave him a fair price for his property, and he went happily down to the bank. This is the Titusville Supply Company, and uh, it was owned by uh, McNerney's, and... Uh, they sold out to Herb, and he moved the whole operation up to Hightown. This was all torn down from the, from the uh, bridge, clear up Franklin Street and up Diamond Street, and it sat vacant for five years. My son was in school at that time, and so they decided to go down one night and plant corn on, uh, on some of that ground, but it wasn't... <laughs> It wouldn't grow any corn. It was all just fill and gravel and so on. So the corn never came up. But the first building they built was a farmer's market right up 
almost to where the farmer's market had been on, had been on Bring, Spring Street. So it was a farmer's market in the new mall, and of course now it's Save-A-Lot. They changed the name. Made a big parking lot, too, uh, while they're at it. Then the Marine Bank moved their bank. They had been on the, in the old Second National Bank building on, uh, on Washington and Spring Street, and they moved it down into the mall. And, of course, Marine Bank then became PNC Bank. So now you have PNC Bank located in the mall uh, right along Diamond Street there, like. This is a Ford garage, and it was located on Martin and Diamond. The Ford garage by, uh, was owned by quite a few different people. The last people that owned it were Joneses. It was a long building, run clear from Central uh, Spring, Diamond Street clear down to Spring. And uh, Otis had it at one time. Fleming owned it at one time. And then, of course, the uh, Joneses ended up at the last time. And next door, Sherm Reed had a uh, Pontiac Cadillac garage right next to the Ford garage. And uh, then it became a pick and buy, a shoe store but after he left. And Mrs. Myers next door had a drain service. And uh, this ended up as a uh, tavern. And uh, the man that owned it held out for a pretty good price before he sold out. And anyway, they tore that all down and they put in this park right in front of the central towers which goes over to Martin Street and uh, where the Ford Garage, and they built the central towers, and then right, uh, they moved part of that uh, space for a parking lot in front of the central towers. And on the east side of the towers, Perkins built a new restaurant. This is where the Keystone Station used to be. It's set there on that corner, and uh, then we ended up with a uh, Perkins station. And uh, in that old book, there was a picture of the Burgess building. And uh, this was down on the East Main Street, taken over by the city and the school system. This is called Burgess Park. The school system hires and pays all the people on the pool and so on, and the city maintains maintenance on the on the park of course we can't leave it all alone we got to modernize it so we added on a piece on the west side of Burgess Park Jiggs the Mill gave me this uh, slide to copy it's St. Paul's Reformed Church up on the head of Franklin Street clear up on the where Franken makes a jog on up over the hill. When I went to take a picture of it, the three spires were gone. I took it in the wintertime because in the summertime, you can't hardly see it. It's hidden by all the leaves and so on. But uh, since St. Paul's is already closed now and those people have moved on to different churches and so on. They had the money, but they just didn't have the people. They have a... a uh, a fund, and they distribute money through the Leitner Fund to people just in Titusville. This is a, is the Catholic manse uh, to the rear of uh, St. Titus Church, and it was a large building, probably a son of a gun to heat and so on, and I never remember them having more than two priests, more than two priests at a time, and it was probably a large building for just two people and a caretaker. So they get, they get at and build a new one. And this is a new Catholic manse on West Main Street. This is a picture of the New York or Pennsylvania freight station. It was looks like a derelict now at that time, but it was on, a, on a South Perry Street beside the railroad tracks. As you can see, it looks like it had gone to rack and ruin, but uh, this is where all the uh, freight station 
from the Pennsylvania Railroad used to come in. The passenger station was down on the corner of Franklin Street, but the freight station was up on Perry Street. And so they started in to refurbish that. Then they moved the 21 locomotives, cabooses, into the uh, siding right next to the the uh, Pennsylvania station there. And so a lot of people come to ride the uh, train and uh, some of them will stay in the cabooses and so on. And then they ride the, the uh, train down through the valley that changed the world. They made quite a change on the Perry Street Station. It looks a, a lot better than, than it did when it was practically nothing. They got a big parking lot there, and they're, the caboose, as I said, as I said, were all painted to the colors of the uh, different railroads that carried them. And there you can see the cabooses are all lined up there in a row. The building on the right would be the uh, frontier foundry building to begin with and then it became part of Charter Plastics. This is the Dowling Motel. Hotel. It was on the on uh, Spring Street uh, very near the corner of Perry and Spring where they built the country fair. They tore that house down. There had been a house on the corner there also but they moved it up up on the second street uh, up through town. Country fair uh, sets there. And uh, years ago, it used to be uh, George Sterling's Pennzoil filling station. But it's long gone, and now it's a country fair. This is a building of the Rice property that was in that old 95 directory. And uh, it was sort of a unique building in that it had a cubicle on the top of the building. It's set there on the corner of 2nd and uh, West Central Avenue. And uh, sort of a landmark, maybe now would be classified as a national shrine. But they tore it down and built a parking lot right there and they put a super duper in there on that, uh, on that lot. And it was, had been a uh, Zadarko grocery store and then it became a super duper. And now they've remodeled it, and it's a uh, women's health care center, I think is the name of it, right on the corner of Cent Cent West Central Avenue and 2nd Street, just beyond the CMA Church. This is a sign for their building and so on. Do you remember Spring Street when it looked like this? There's a Brownell shoe store, which I showed you before, that was McFates and G&H. And uh, this was the exchange bank and the oil exchange and the commercial bank building that were on on uh, West Spring Street. It would be across from the Titusville Trust Company building. And the, they took, uh, Grants took the under part of both those buildings and put a store in there. It, it went from that barber shop clear down to Exchange Alley. Grants tore that all down, and they put in a new store. They built a W.T. Grant store on that corner, clear down to Exchange Alley there uh, across from the bank. Then it became McGregor's, McCrory's. McCrory's bought them out and uh, used it for a uh, store, similar to Grant's. Then Titusville Five and Dime bought it, so it became Five five and dime. They weren't there too long until it was sold and changed hands to the bargain store.
buy in store. True temper, true value, Brian's hardware. Now it's gone. Up on North Franklin Street, just above the hotel, there was a building, and the Moose Club was in the one corner of that building, and uh, Bob Batal had a plumbing shop, and Dr. Anderson's office is right there to the right, and they had a fire, and so they just they tore that all down, and, uh, and they made a parking lot out of that with the hotel. That is uh, Cherry Street right there. It goes clear down past where Coates' garage and the Buick garage and, and Walt Howe's tire shop clear over to Martin Street. And that was all torn down and made into a parking lot. And, of course, that's where CVS came in. This is the Goldstein Building. This is on the corner of Spring and Franklin Street. This had a unique uh, system in it for clerks. They had a uh, traveling uh, line that carried all the change and money to a second or third floor. So the clerk made a sale, put the money in a little container. It went up to the third floor, and the change came back, and the sale slipped. And uh, that building was all torn down, and it became the Northwest Savings. Molly... Metzger had moved her hat shop into the front corner of the Goldstein building, and it's gone now, and so on. But the Northwest Savings had that corner, and uh, and they tore down that Goldstein building. It was a long building, and clear down to the parking lot was on the right there, and then this building, which was a Kerr dry cleaning Kerr, K-E-R-R, -R, and the Magic Curl Beauty Shop. And uh, they weren't there too long, and they tore that down, and it became a parking lot for the Northwest Savings. Netcasts originating from the birthplace of the oil industry, we are the stream. 